Hi everyone, and welcome to another Elvistory video. Um, and this video is the story of um, the time that Elvis Presley dated um, a woman by the name of June Juanico. And uh, Elvis and June started dating um, approximately 1955, and their relationship was about <clears throat> excuse me, a year and a half long. So, um, as the story goes, uh, June and um, a couple of friends went to see Elvis play. Now, um, I believe it was the summer of 55, Elvis was playing, you know, in the South. You know, he hadn't really broke big yet, so he was playing like, you know, like I said, in the South, like regionally, and so in, uh, he was playing a show in Biloxi, Mississippi, which is where June was from, and, um, that night, um, June, <clears throat> June's friends were like, oh, come on, and June knew nothing about Elvis Presley, and her friends were like, come on, you got to see this guy, he's, you know, he's really hot and all this stuff, and June was like, all right, I'll just go just to more or less just make them happy, <laughs> so June winds up going to the show, and, um, you know, she's in the front row with her friends, and, you know, all the girls, are, all the other girls are screaming like, ah, you know, but June was like, you know, I wasn't like that. You know, I, I just didn't go crazy over somebody, you know. So, but she said, you know, we were in the front row and, you know, Elvis was playing and he, you know, he kind of looked over at her and they kind of locked eyes a little bit. She said a couple of times. And she said, I guess I stood out because, um, maybe a day or two before she had gotten like a really uh, dark tan and she was wearing like a white dress so she really stood out kind of to him but she says at the show now um, uh, I think he took like a break in between and he was signing autographs so her and her friends well her friends were like oh, let's, come on, let's go get his autograph, and, you know, you can meet him and everything, she's like, no, no, you guys go, you know, it's not for me, blah, 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 but in the meantime, she was, like, kind of play, playing it off, because she, she really thought he was gorgeous, and, like, you know, so, you know, they go, hit the friends go to see Elvis signing autographs, like, I think it was right, she said, right by where the restrooms were, and she recalls like there was this big glowing arrow above <laughs> Elvis where he was signing autographs and apparently she was walking I think out of the uh, the ladies room and Elvis spotted her again and he kind of reached through a bunch of people to grab her and she uh and, and he's like hey where you going where you going pretty girl where you going and she she just kind of, you know, really didn't make eye contact with him. But um, he uh, kind of turned her around and she finally locked eyes with him. And she was like, he was the most gorgeous human being I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, from that point on, she kind of started falling for him. And so, he, he, so, you know, June was playing it cool. She wasn't like, you know, going nuts she over him so he, he he's like you know why don't after the show i got a half hour left on my show why don't you take me around biloxi and show me around so she's like well there isn't much to see you know you wouldn't have too much fun she was trying to play it off trying to play like hard to get a little bit and uh so i was like there's got to be something we can do so elvis was he kept you know prying away and prying away and finally she said okay you know We'll, we'll get together and, you know, so the wind up is they wind up getting together after the show and, uh, they go, um, there was like this, uh, 
they went driving around and then they found like this um i don't know it was like this i don't know, I don't know hotel or something not a hotel but like a this some kind of uh place where there was a pier that went out over i think it was over the water and now they had gotten out of the car and Elvis and her walked on this pier, and according to June, she's like, it was like such a magical night. She said, we're standing on this pier, and this moon just happens to be shining so bright, and it felt like it was just shining on the two of us, and she's like, before I knew it, Elvis had his arms around me, and he starts kissing my neck gently, and, you know, she said he was like, the whole night he was a real gentleman, and he really didn't like, you know, force himself he just kind of went with the moment type of thing and she let you know she let it happen and uh she said this went on you know for a while and then they went and driven around some more and then he took her home and she's like we got to my house like around she says like 3 3 30 in the morning somewhere around there and um uh they sat in the car and they just talked and talked and talked about everything for like, she said, it seemed like forever. They were talking for like, must have been close to three hours, she said. Just sitting and talking till like almost six o'clock in the morning. Or maybe even later. Um, they were just talking about various things like, you know, he was telling her about him and, you know, she about her. And, and she was like, one of the things she... Um, she, she asked Elvis, she's like, so, what's your real name? Because she thought, like, all these celebrities had, like, you know, names where they were disguising who they really were. So she thought Elvis was doing that. He was like, what do you mean? <laughs> He's like, my name is Elvis Aaron Presley. That's it. <laughs> so she was, <coughs> excuse me, she thought um, that was kind of funny that, you know, she felt a little embarrassed that she said that, but she said... In, in you know they they just laughed it off and it was you know just a funny thing but they they wind up uh, you know Elvis you know uh, says good night to her and he said you know I'll call you you know we'll get together again and you know I'd like to see you again and so she's like you yeah, know all right so she says after this um she actually didn't hear from him. He didn't call at all for like, she said, this went on for months and months. Like, you know, she's like, I thought we really, you know, got along and clicked and whatnot. But it turns out um, June's brother was blocking her phone calls from Elvis. Because I guess he was being protective or something or. And then finally she found out after all these months, her brother said to her, yeah, this guy with the hillbilly accent keeps calling the house and asking for him. He's been doing it for months. So naturally June, I don't know what she said to her brother, but you know, she, I imagine she was a little upset. So with this in mind, she was like, oh my God. So she got in the car with her friends and they drove to Memphis, uh, at the time, Elvis was living on Audubon Drive in Memphis. He had not yet been, uh, he, this was just before he moved to Graceland, like a year before. So now we're into, uh, I think it was almost 56 that she went and seen him. She drove to Memphis because the last time she had seen him, I think was, the, was like, uh, yeah, it was into the summer of 55. So. Now we're going into 56 and he's on Autobahn Drive and this is when things are really taking off for him. So, um, as the story goes, uh, she, she and her friends drove from Biloxi to Memphis because she wanted to tell Elvis what, what happened and that, you know, it wasn't his fault or anything, you know, stuff like that. So she recalls pulling up and she's like, all these fans are around. She's like, you know. And some of them are saying, oh, he's not even home, you know, whatever, and this and that. So it turns out Elvis, I think, and his parents pull in into the driveway while she's there, as fate would have it. And, you know, Elvis and his parents get out of the car, and June 
is like she's standing by the fence on Autobahn Drive and she sees them get out of the car and she just jumps onto the top of the fence so Elvis could see her. And of course he notices her and he comes running up to her. He's like, my God, June, what are you doing here? How did you? And, and you know, she, you know, they, they talked for like 15 minutes or so and June explained everything to him, you know, like, you know, my brother was blocking my cold. I thought you just, you know, blew me off or whatever. So they straightened everything out with that. And it turns out um, Elvis uh, took her out for the rest of the night. I think they went to the movies and stuff. And I think, I don't know if her friends stood around or whatever, but I think her friends went back and then Elvis wound up driving her back. And um, he told June, he said, listen, you know, come July, I got like... Um, couple of weeks vacation coming up you know you want to spend some time together so so they did and uh i think Elvis rented this house in biloxi and him and june were together all the time now elvis's mom gladys really liked june and she recalls gladys saying that you're perfect for my son because you seem so like you know um uh, it's like she was like more advanced for her age because when her and Elvis met, when June and Elvis met, June was 17, Elvis was 20. So at this point, they were like 18 and 21. But Gladys told her a few times, you seem so beyond your years for a young girl. And you seem like very domestic, like you would be good for my son. And my son needs somebody to take care of him. So... She recalls that Glad her and Gladys really got along well and that Gladys thought that really she would be the one for Elvis. And um, so they're on vacation and um, June recalls this one night that um, her and Elvis were just, they had a blanket and they were just laying under the stars and they were just talking. And, you know, they got on to marriage. And, you know, um, basically Elvis really wanted to um marry her he's like i'd love to marry you june but you know can you could you wait like three years or, you know because you know i can't do it right now i'm just so busy and when things i guess when things calm down you know then we can get married can you and of course june's like yeah i'll wait absolutely but <laughs> so i mean what girl isn't gonna say that to elvis but anyway that's what happened and, you know, she recalls that they had a real great time and, and uh, you know, they went out on a boat together. Her, I think her, her parents and Elvis and his parents, they all went out on a boat. And uh, this, this was all in um, Biloxi, I believe. And, uh, and then from then on, after the vacation, Elvis actually took her with him on on tour i think for for some tour dates in florida and i think one of them was uh miami or i mean he played some you know um cities down here in florida and uh, she was with him for for uh a good portion of that and from that point on i think elvis fast forward a little bit he went to um um to hollywood to f uh, film actually while he was in miami he got the script for love me tender but it wasn't called love me tender at that point it was called the reno brothers and uh but of course you know later on they changed it to fit you know elvis's song love me tender into the movie so they changed the title so um Elvis goes off and he makes that movie and then he makes, in the meantime, you know, him and June are kind of apart. And uh, then he finishes um, the movie Loving You. And that was also in 56, I believe. And uh, he telegrams June. Now he said, you know, and what happened was, in the in, in the interim, I believe, somewhere along the lines, I don't have this exactly right, but 
a, uh, a reporter, I think this was while he was on tour in Florida, actually cornered June and said, are you his only girlfriend and this, that, and the other thing? And, and she said, well, I think I might be number one or number two. I'm not sure. You know, she was just being honest. And of course, Colonel caught wind of this because it was in a newspaper. And now he wasn't having this because he didn't want Elvis attached to nobody because it would hurt. He thought it was hurt his image with all the teenage girls, you know. So, of course, Elvis had to go along with what Colonel said at that point because, you know, he trusted him. And so uh, Colonel kind of got in the way of that in the fact that he made Elvis say things that in the public that Elvis didn't really kind of mean, you know, because they kind of, you know, he, he, Colonel told Elvis to say, oh, well, you know, she's just one of my girlfriends, and he, Elvis actually had to say that in the paper, even though it wasn't exactly true that he had so many, I mean, he had a couple, and June was, she wasn't naive enough to think that he didn't, you know, but she, she was happy and content that pretty much she was like, the, one of the main, if not the main, and uh, so that pretty much kind of put a wrench in their relationship and a strain, kind of. And after he gets back from loving you, I mean, she, uh, he, he telegrams her to meet him on a train stop. He had a layover in New Orleans, I think, on the way home or something to that effect. And she's, he telegrammed June to meet him on the train because he had a surprise for her. And at that point, all this was going on. And I think he, June actually heard that he came back to Memphis at one point with this other girl, I think a Vegas girl or some kind of thing like that. Not a Vegas girl. Maybe it was. I don't know. But it was some kind of girl he came home with. And she was like, you know, I can't do this kind of thing. And she wanted to get kind of back at him, really. So she, June actually, while Elvis is off making Loving You, you know, June gets to her wits end. She's like, you know, really can't. You know, she sees Elvis with this other woman. Here she is waiting around for him. You know, what's a girl to do? You know, so she actually kind of falls in love with this other guy and and when she gets this telegram for Elvis, she's like, she went there, not because she was, you know, oh, Elvis is home. She actually wanted to give it to him, like, you know, and and that's kind of what she did, you know. She got on the train with him, and she said, just so you know, I'm seeing somebody else, and we're engaged, and this and that, and, and you know, Elvis is like, you know, He's like, you got to come back to Memphis. He's like, I want you to come back to Memphis with me. This is while they're on the train in New Orleans. He's like, come to Memphis with me, please. I got a big surprise for you. A big surprise. He's like, don't worry about what's going on. You know, just come with me. Just go to Memphis. I promise you, I got a big surprise for you. And according to June, she was just like, she was like, as mad as she was for that with the other girl and everything. And even though she was with somebody, and I believe she was engaged to this guy at the time, she was like, I was so, she said I was a hair away from just saying, all right, let's go. But she didn't. She didn't do it. And uh, so that's how it ended with Elvis in June. And um, I believe this was late, um, late 56 when that happened, that meeting on the train. And... Uh, and that was the last time she saw Elvis until it wasn't the final time. Actually, in, um, I think, the early 60s, she said, 61, 62, she happened to go to the movies. I, I'm not sure if this was in Memphis, if she happened to be in Memphis or, but she was, it, as fate would have it, Elvis took Priscilla to the movies. I think this was around 61 or 62. And as fate would have it, June was there, believe it or not. And I, I don't know if she was with her husband or, I mean, or whoever it was. And she sees Elvis and she, she walks up behind him and kind of like, 
puts her hands around his eyes like surprise and according to june he you know he turned around right away and shot up and he was just like elated to see her and you know he she, she said that he gave her he just immediately grabbed her and hugged her and you know and and some of the guys in elvis's thing thought somebody was messing with him and they started coming over and elvis was like no no this is you know and um but she recalls that night that he was so happy to see her and you know because it was like they had like you know you know i guess in elvis's mind it was just like unfinished you know because i i think he really you know he really had it for june you know she was a beautiful woman still is but you know and and uh june said that night at the movies that priscilla was very uh she was very nice she actually didn't say nothing i guess she was used to the the fan thing so she might have thought june was just another fan but she said priscilla was very nice didn't say nothing just kept watching the movie <laughs> just like pretending like nothing was going on i guess i don't know but but uh um yeah she said she'll never forget that moment that was that time at the movie theater was the last time she ever saw elvis and uh when she heard that, you know, like um, 15, 16 years later, when, of course, when she heard when Elvis, when he passed, she, you know, she just couldn't, you know, she obviously she was very shaken and very upset and very, as June said it, you know, uh, I think her mother broke the news to her and she was just, you know, naturally distraught and upset and you know because she said the reason you know that is is because Elvis will always be the love of my life he was the love of my life even though I was happily I happily went on with my life with another man I married you know we had kids she said Elvis she said in my heart Elvis Presley will always be the love of my life and I thought that was really nice so that's basically the story of Elvis Presley and uh, and June Juanico. So I hope you guys like this story. And uh, I threw in a couple of pictures at at the end of this video, and I hope you enjoy them. Okay, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. And uh, TCB, and God bless.